Hello, thanks for joining me on Craig's Gun Channel. Today we're going to cover the Keltec PMR30. Keltec Industries is an American firearms manufacturer founded in 1995 by George Kelgren. Utilizing economical manufacturing methods, they provide affordable firearms options with their biggest claim to fame being as a firearms innovator, bringing unique firearms to the market that are unlike anything else. Today we're going to cover the PMR30. The PMR-30 is a full-size pistol that fires the 22 Winchester Magnum rimfire. What is particularly unique to this firearm is that it holds 30 of those rounds all within a standard grip. The PMR-30 was released with great fanfare in 2011 as an innovative new pistol. However, the reality is, is that it's actually a descendant of a similar pistol, the Grendel P-30, which was developed 20 years earlier. Prior to opening Keltec, George Kelgren owned and operated Grendel Firearms, producing firearms that made heavy use of polymers, which was still a new concept. One of his early designs, released in 1990, was a unique single-action fluted chamber blowback-operated pistol in 22 Magnum that had the capability to hold 30 rounds in the magazine. The primary engineering obstacle, in fact, was the magazine itself. It's difficult to get rimfire cases to function well in a stacked magazine. The rims tend to bind on each other, and the shape causes the cases to tilt more and more as they're stacked on top of each other. Kelgren was able to develop a magazine that solved those issues and resulted in the ability to hold 30 rounds of 22 Magnum. The P30 worked, however it was prone to jamming, and being such an unconventional firearm, both in design and materials, it never took off, only developing a niche following. Production ceased after five years, and Grendel Firearms subsequently closed down. Shortly thereafter, he opened Caltech Industries. Once Caltech was up and running, work continued on the P30 design to overcome the next primary obstacle presented by 22 Magnum ammunition, reliable extraction and operation. The case designed for 22 Magnum is a straight walled case made out of fairly soft brass, which is necessary for rimfire primers to function. This results in a situation where upon firing, the case expands and grips the chamber making extraction difficult. Furthermore, the powder and bullet weights of these small cartridges can vary widely, causing additional issues with being able to regulate such differing ammunition. The Grendel P30 design sought to overcome this by using a fluted chamber to reduce the case friction. While this worked, it was not perfect and the firearms were notorious for their ammunition preferences. Some liked high-velocity, lightweight bullets, some preferred heavier bullets, Regardless, however, they were firearms prone to jamming. To solve these issues, Keltec developed a hybrid delayed blowback action, which provides for additional time in the extraction cycle to reduce internal pressures so the pistol can extract fired rounds reliably. This has the additional benefit of allowing for a wider tolerance in bullet weights. With the magazine design already solved, and now the extraction operation solved, they released the new design as the PMR-30 in 2011. The PMR-30 is a full-size, lightweight pistol that weighs in at just over 19 ounces fully loaded. It has a single-action trigger, hybrid-delayed blowback action with a high-capacity 30-round magazine utilizing a heel release. It features ambidextrous controls and fiber-optic sights are standard. Let's take a closer look. And as always, before doing anything, we'll go ahead and do a safety check. And it is clear of any ammunition. Magazine is empty. So we'll go ahead and go over the controls and features of the Keltec PMR30. Uh, here's the trigger. It is a, a single only, uh, single action only trigger. Have the safety. Red means fire. To engage the safety, you would lift up, and of course down to to disengage. The magazine release is a heel release located right here. You would simply push in on that to release the magazine. This is the slide lock. Uh, the magazine does activate that via this little tab right there. When the last round is fired and the follower comes all the way up, that will push up on the lock. As we can see, then that locks it in place. Of course, to release the slide, you would just pull down on that. This is the 
takedown pin. It goes through to the other side, right there. And those are the primary controls of the PMR30. So let's take a look at disassembly. First, we'll remove the magazine. The takedown pin, you simply push with some type of a hard object. Then that releases it, you can pull it through. The slide then comes off the frame. The frame itself, we have the hammer here. This is the ejector. The feed ramp, of course, there. And uh, basically, you would just want to wipe everything out, clean any grit or grime, uh, lightly coat the surfaces, the metal surfaces with oil uh, and the rails assemblies. And uh, that's pretty much as far as you'll want to take this apart. The slide is where all the action uh, takes place on the PMR30. Uh, this has what they call a delayed blowback action. And by that, basically what happens is there's a barrel block here that locks the barrel to the slide. And it's not really, it doesn't lock it, it just kind of pushes it in place. And what it, the, the way it functions is the uh, 22 Magnum or WMR uh, ammunition is a straight walled case. And when the firearm fires, the case expands slightly and it actually grips a hold of the inside of the chamber. So the way this works, and the, the pin goes through there and locks it to the frame, so that, that would be rigid to the frame. So when you fire the, the, the gun, the blowback will push the slide back and the barrel can move back and forth in that barrel block. So what that does is it allows that cartridge case to expand and grip the chamber just slightly. So while this slide goes back, the barrel will stay in, it, in place where it's at for just a little bit. You see that comes forward about a, I don't know, quarter to a half inch before it would actually then start to open up all the way. And that allows the pressures to then drop to a sufficiently safe level before it opens up that chamber area. And that's basically how that would work. So as far as disassembly, uh, <clears throat> what you need to do is, this is the recoil spring. The recoil spring goes through the front of the slide right there. You can see that. And it goes into a little recess on the barrel block. So basically, you just need to push this forward some grip a hold of it, you can push the, the, the barrel block back, and then just lift up slightly to lift it out of its recess, and then you can remove the spring. It is a captive spring, so uh, that makes it actually, it's, it's not too bad. If this weren't captive, uh, every time you would take this apart, I imagine you'd have to go on a hunt for springs. So, you know, that's a good design there. At that point, you could take the buffer out, then you can slide this barrel block all the way forward and then it lifts out. The barrel, you can then tilt up and remove from the slide. So as far as uh, the, then the rest of the parts here, it has dual extractors on both sides there. Uh, you can see them from uh, this side here too, the little hooks. And that's what would uh, grip a hold of the, the rim of the cartridge uh, to, to pull it out of the chamber. And uh, so you want to clean everything off, uh, wipe it all down, get any grit and grime out of there. Same with the barrel block. Go ahead and wipe it all down, clean it up. The barrel, the outside and inside. Wipe off the springs. Basically just wipe everything down and clean it nice, uh, you know, nice and clean. Uh, coat everything with a light coating of oil. And then reassembly is just the opposite of the assembly. Now if you notice the barrel, there's that little feed ramp extension. That will go, if you have the slide upside down, toward the top. It goes toward the bottom of the gun, so if the slide were right side up, this would go like that. So, that would just drop into place. Then you go ahead and push that forward. Put your barrel block back in place. And then slide it back. Then get your spring. The big, the large end, there's uh, two kind of sides to it. So if you forget, this is the side 
where you can push that through. That will go toward the front. We'll first put our buffer back in. It's got two little half moon shapes. The larger one goes around the barrel on the bottom. Then put the spring back in. And then you just push forward and down to lock that back into place. Line up the rails with the, the rails of the pistol. Push the pin in and it's all reassembled. Do a function check just to make sure it works. And that's it. The 22 Magnum round was originally developed for use in rifles, and the powders used and volume of powder is optimized for longer barrels. This results in dramatic large muzzle flash and sound as the powder continues to burn as the bullet leaves the barrel. Combined with the light recoil provided by such a small bullet, it's literally a blast to shoot and generally attracts onlookers at the range. While not a preferred firearm for defense, having 30 rounds at your disposal and little to no muzzle rise allowing for quick follow-up shots on target, I would not feel underprotected with it in that role if it were pressed into it. However, the reliability of rimfire primers and the higher rate of jamming prevalent in all rimfire firearms should relegate this to target shooting only. When this pistol was introduced, there was an immediate clamor for it to be modified to allow for much more affordable 22 long rifle ammunition. The magazine feeding issues with rimfire ammo is magnified with long rifle ammunition as case tilt is more pronounced with the shorter length. I was excited to find out in 2014 that Caltech was granted a patent for a 22 long rifle magazine design that addresses those issues, and finally at SHOT Show 2019, they announced the release of their new CP33 pistol. This new pistol will provide 33 rounds of 22 long rifle in a standard size magazine. And as of this date, they've started shipping those pistols out. As soon as I obtain one, I'll make a video of it for you. I hope this information was of value and want to thank you for joining me today. And please subscribe to make sure you don't miss anything. And as always, until next week, stay safe.